that transition was, I just felt it. Like it was something that this is what I wanted to go do. And then, you know, it was kind of position. You know, when, when something's right, God will make it right. Welcome to the Ad Valued Entrepreneurs Podcast, where we're on a mission to end entrepreneurial unhappiness. If you're an entrepreneur with a burning desire to change the world, this podcast is for you. We're here to help you transform your life and business so that you can achieve the freedom and fulfillment you crave. This show is dedicated to entrepreneurs who want more out of their life, more meaning, more purpose, and ultimately, more happiness. You deserve it all and it's possible. I'm your host, Robert Peterson, pastor turned life coach for business owners. I believe that success without happiness is not true success at all, but there's always hope for those who are willing to take action. Join us every week as we bring you inspiring leaders and messages that will help you on your journey towards success. Thank you for investing your time with us today. Let's get started. My guest today is a dynamic, results-oriented leader. Ron Nussbaum is the conductor of change, never accepts the status quo or an excuse. Ron has submitted himself as a visionary and leader in construction, working in many facets. He's the host of Construction Champions podcast and the founder and CEO of NutNest. Ron uses his knowledge and experience to help others grow and change the overall mindset around construction. Robert's talking to Ron Nussbaum, the CEO of and founder of Nutnest. Ron has taken his experience from the Marines and working in the construction industry to solve a major problem he noticed in many projects, communications. He's the founder and CEO of Nutnest, an app to help customers communicate with the contractor on the project rather than not knowing who to talk to or how to get help. They get the answers they want from the right sources. Ron, thank you so much for coming on the show today. Just looking forward to sharing your story and, man, learning about... Uh, your transition through entrepreneurship contractor to software dude likes. So let's, <laughs> let's just get this thing started. Oh man. It is great to be here and I'm super excited. Yeah. So I typically start our show with our guests, just sharing their own entrepreneurial journey. What made them make the leap into entrepreneurship and then uh, what impact you're making in the world today? Yeah, absolutely. So I'm uh, in 20 or 2007, I joined the Marine Corps. I'm originally from Akron, Ohio. I left, I, I left Akron, Ohio and set out on a journey to figure out, you know, what was my future going to be like? And the Marine Corps wasn't a long-term solution to that. So I ended up transitioning out and I ended up in Michigan. That's where my wife is originally from. I had no plans on going back to Ohio. Uh, I planned on going south, and then what ended up happening? I ended up farther north than <laughs> I even I even started. So uh, during that transition period, I was trying to figure out like, what does this look like? What's the next the next step here? And that led me into residential construction, where I spent just over a decade. And uh, during my time in residential construction, I've done everything from digging the hose to running the company. And uh, during that time, I dealt with some escalated customers. And I really dug into why. And communication kept coming up as being the main reason, which led me into creating NutNest, uh, which is what I do now full time. Uh, I'm the founder and CEO of NutNest Work Customer Communication Platform. And we help the construction industry communicate with their homeowners effectively. And uh, during that time, also, I bought and sold a cleaning company and I've done all kinds of just different things. I've always been out there trying to figure out what's that best fit. Where can Ron be the best version of Ron? <laughs> Nice. So, so let's talk about uh, a little bit deeper about this communication problem. What, uh, what, what was the root of it? I mean, I love entrepreneurs that figure out a problem and then, and then try to figure out a solution and bring that solution to the marketplace. Right. That's, that's really the heart of entrepreneurship. So, so let's dig into this problem a little bit more. Tell me, tell me more about challenges yeah. communicating with homeowners. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, what I found was, 
my homeowners didn't know who to talk to. A lot of times they actually had the wrong information. Like you have that sales reps number or that general contractors number that comes out and originally does the bid and that's who you move forward with. But they don't have the answers to 90% of the questions afterwards. That's somebody in the office or somebody that runs the project or that foreman or that superintendent. But the homeowner doesn't have their info, doesn't know how to get a hold of them. So when they have a question, they're left either calling the sales rep or reaching out to the office. And that just gets you the age old, the industry standard is, hey, sorry, I'm not the person. Let me find out who is and I'll get back to you. And that's where the ball gets dropped. And that's what ends up happening. It's the ball gets dropped. Everything goes from zero to 1,000 really quick in construction. I like to say that you can have a nice little fire happening and within an hour, the whole house can be on fire uh, from a customer perspective because it, stuff just escalates quickly. And it's because there's not clear lines of communication there and people feel like they're being intentionally left out of the loop. And uh, what we do is we just help get people on the same page. And we're really a tool for contractors and builders to just be great at communication. Uh, because I truly believe it's not because they wanna be bad, it's because we have no systems and no place to be able to have our communication centrally located. I, mean, I was just talking with a good buddy of mine that he's doing his own project and the contractor emailed him and it went to an email that he typically doesn't use, but that's what the contractor had. Next thing, he finds it the night before they're supposed to be showing up. They have to go get an Airbnb. They have to make all this stuff happen within about four hours so they can be prepared just because the message went to the wrong email. And that's we stop that kind of stuff. And all conversation was I told him he should have be on the nut nest platform to start his project. Well, let's just say that situation brought him right into the Ford real quick. Nice. Well, and, and I, I, the bigger challenge is sometimes you, you're you, you're on site and then the homeowners, you know, still close by and they're asking, you know, people on the site, you know, hey, what's happening? Oh, what are we doing today? You know, or. And, and of course the, the workers on site aren't typically the ones that have the, the, the full picture, right? They, they just have the picture of their piece of the project and the thing that they're working on. And, and they're not aware of all of the complexities of, of a full project. Yeah, absolutely. And we get, so expectations is a big thing that I talk about because that's, that's what we have to set especially one around communication. And what we do is we make that really easy because the expectation is here. We, we have invested in utilizing nut nest. This is where all of our communications go through. So homeowner, you download the app and this is where we're talking about everything within your project, documents, pictures, all of that stuff comes into a collective place. So the homeowner has the expectations. They know, oh, this is where I'm going to go communicate. And we built channels in there. So if that customer has a question about scheduling, they're reaching out to the person that's in charge of that schedule. They're not reaching out to say the office manager who probably doesn't know, or say the operations man. Instead of reaching out to somebody that don't know, they reach out to somebody that knows, they get their question answered. And then that customer is empowered to ask questions before people show up to the job site. 35% of time on job sites in construction is wasted because of communication. And a lot of that comes from customers not being empowered to ask questions before the guys show up because what do they say? They say, ah, oh, he probably don't know. I'll just wait for the guys to get out here and I'll talk to him. And unfortunately, a lot of times that's too late. These are conversations that should happen before guys are on site, but the homeowners just, they're not comfortable to reach out because they don't know if they're talking to the right person or not. Well, and it gives you a chance to really, I like the way you're talking, empower the homeowner. So, so not only here's a tool and you know, you're asking the question of the right person. So obviously you're going to increase the homeowner's satisfaction level because now they don't feel like they're in the dark or in the gray zone and and 
that they're they're able to put their questions out there and get their questions answered by the person that should be answering them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And it, that we take those concerns and we just do away with them. And then everybody starts working together because now that contractor knows, that homeowner knows, like this is where everything's at. So it becomes easy to have these communications. It's not like sending out emails and text messages and phone calls, WhatsApp. I meet guys that just use Facebook Messenger as well. So we take all that stuff out and we start to create all this information and get it in one place. And then we organize it per project. So then that contractor can go in and be like, here's what's being said on this specific project. And it just makes it easy because it's no longer all this different stuff happening. It's in one place. It's organized. Like I said, my goal is truly to be a tool in the tool belt to help contractors and builders be great at communication. Nice. So as Ron transitions from the, the guy digging the holes, the guy putting up the walls, the guy <laughs> to <laughs> how, how, what made you jump into the tech space? So th this is a journey I went down and we, I've been trying to move over in for a couple of years before it actually ended up happening. And uh, 2021, I got accepted into the 10X incubator, uh, one of a uh, hundred companies that they moved forward with, but they had over 23,000 companies apply. So getting in there, beating that door down, getting accepted, and now we made it to market. That got me introduced to Jared Yellen from Project 10K, who's a non-technical tech founder as well. Like I'm not, I'm not a technical guy. Like I like to say, like when this, when I first had this ID, I just put together a haphazard at best PowerPoint presentation <laughs> of what I thought this should look like. Now it looks a lot better than what that original PowerPoint looked like, but that is where it came from. And I just started beating the doors down and, you know, I found a passion in serving the industry instead of working in the industry like that. I really, I really aligned with helping the construction industry with what's the number one customer complaint. And I, I felt I could really have a huge impact so I decided this is what I wanted to do. We built the product out. We went live in January, February, somewhere in there. Uh, some would say we're probably not completely live at this point in time, but we are, we're throughout the United States. Uh, but we're, that transition was, I just felt it. Like it was something that this is what I wanted to go do. And then, you know, it was kind of, position you know when, when something's right god will make it right mm -hmm. so I, I was kind of put in a position where i wasn't kind of I, I was put in a position where it was like here you're either going to continue doing this or that one of the two and i made the choice to do this and go all in and as they say burn burn the ships do whatever like this we made the decision like this was the future for myself and my family. And we needed to take this shot. Uh, we needed to step up to the plate and be willing to hit a grand slam. And that's what led to doing this now full time. Nice. So let's talk about the power of a mastermind and the power of um, mentors in, in helping you make these, this transition. <laughs> Yeah, so I, I think everybody should have a coach. Everybody should have a mentor personally, business wise. I try to surround myself with people that are pouring me up, that are con consistently challenging me and pushing me to another level. Uh, and I've gotten around the right people. So I like to say I spent a lot of time trying to get the wrong people on my bus. <laughs> And when I finally realized I was trying to get the wrong people on the bus, it allowed me to go find the right people to get them on the bus. And once they got on that bus, you know, they're helping navigate it. They're helping take me where I need to go. And my growth in the last 18 months has been the most powerful thing throughout my entire life so far. 
Uh, if you would have asked me 18 months ago where I would be at compared, I, I would have never thought some of the stuff that I'm doing, even being on here, doing this interview, like this stuff was way out of my wheelhouse, but I made it my wheelhouse and I've started to actually enjoy it. But it's because I got around the right people that stretched me and pushed me for all the right reasons instead of the wrong reasons. I was actually talking to Jared, uh, my partner, about, I, don't know, I think three months ago, and we were, I was talking about growth because like I have, I have to become the man, the guy that can run a hundred million dollar company. Like that's what I have to get to. And that's where I'm going. And I understand this journey and where, where I was to where I am now, I've grown so much, but for the first time in my entire life, it's been easy. It had, I mean, not, I, I don't want to say like, it's just easy, like, because everything's hard, like light. It's just, everything's hard. I run a tech startup, but my growth, like it's, it's been easier than it's ever been before. And it's been not as stressful. We will be right back after this short break. Are you an entrepreneur who started their business with purpose and passion only to lose sight of it amidst the daily grind? We understand how frustrating that can be. That's why we're offering free strategy calls to help you gain clarity on the barriers holding you back from achieving your dreams. In just 30 minutes, our experienced coaches will work with you to identify obstacles and develop strategies for overcoming them. There's no commitment or pressure, just a chance to get some assistance and clarity you need. Scheduling is easy. Simply visit smilingcall.com and select a time that works for you. Let's jump on a call and build your business together. It's time for you to add value and achieve your full potential as an entrepreneur. Welcome back. Let's get back to more greatness. And I think that's because I finally just got alignment with what I wanted to do. I got the right people on the bus and around me that were coaching me and mentoring me and leading me to where I want to go. I finally got alignment on all of that, got the right people around, and it makes it a lot easier. Because when you have the wrong people around, you're not just fighting the growth, you're fighting them and you're fighting the alignment of where you're even trying to go. Because if you have somebody that's trying to mold you into something that you're not exactly wanting to be molded into, it causes friction. And that friction makes everything 10 times harder in you just feel like it's, it's such a struggle. And now I feel like, I'm free to grow. Like I have the right people around me and they're going to they're going to check me when I need to be checked and they're going to encourage me when I need to be encouraged and they're going to guide me in the right directions because they've been there. I think that's a that's a critical thing is finding some people that have been there. Like and there's so many coaches out there. There's so many mentors that you can find the right ones for you. And I, I truly believe people don't think about that enough. Uh, I'm on on my podcast. I inter I interview a lot of coaches. And one of the reasons I do that is to s expose the construction industry to it. Because I think a lot of people get tunnel vision and they think this is my only option this guy right here, or this system, when you need to go out and you need to find out what one you work best with and what one makes the most sense. I, I comment on posts all the time in these groups where people are like recommend what, who recommends some coaches. And I'm like, you need to go out and do some research and find people that find somebody you work well with, not just go out and get a coach to get a coach and, that this is that's what coaches would tell you as well. The good coaches would sit there and tell you, you need to make sure you find somebody that you have alignment with because that coach or that mentor, they they want to work with people that they have alignment with, that they feel they can have an impact that's going to be greater than anything that you somebody could individually do. Absolutely. So you mentioned your podcast. Let's talk about the impact your podcast has had on on you and then on your business. <laughs> so, I mean, the podcast has been absolutely amazing. Uh, so Construction Champions podcast, 
I release two episodes a week. I originally started at one, but we've had such a tremendous launch. Like it, it's really been going well. People love it. Uh, we're, we're raising the bar in the construction industry and changing the mindset around it. And that's the conversations we're having. We're talking about what does it take to be a champion in the construction business or just in the construction ordered in general. And it's truly designed to have an impact and a lasting one, because every time we have one of these conversations and we record it and I upload it online, unless they delete the Internet, it's going to be there in perpetuity which for me is amazing to think that five years, 10 years from now, somebody might be struggling with something that we have a conversation about today and they look it up and they get the answers and they can move on and they have a better business, they have a better personal life, they have a better family life because of a conversation that was had. And that's why I started the podcast. And you know, I kicked that egg down the road for a good six, eight months before I committed. And finally, one day, actually, I was, I was out at Arizona at a conference. And they're like, why, you know, if you're, if you're not doing something, why aren't you doing it? And I was like, damn, I don't have a good answer to that. <laughs> so I came home and I recorded the first episode. And I said, next week, we're going to be live. And I uploaded it. And there we go. And I sent out some messages to some people I knew wouldn't say no. You know, like I was like, all right, I'll get some of these, get some guys that I know would do it uh, just because it's me. And we started rolling and then I started getting messages and then I started having uh, other guys as well reach out to me. And it's just been amazing. And everybody wants to get on there because long term, it's having a lasting impact. Uh, and actually we just brought on sponsors and partnerships as well. So people that align with exactly what we talk about, what I align with is adding value to the construction industry. And I always say that if we're working together, that contractor or builder, we have to be creating a win for them for a win for their customer. And that only makes sense. Because if we can't do that to other, then there's no reason why we should have a partnership or anything, because it's all about creating that win for that contractor and that builder. So we're bringing on some sponsorships and partners that truly believe in the same thing and want to have that impact. And it's been amazing. And it's the conversations that I get to have or just mind blowing. I mean, you're on here and you do this. So you understand, like you bring people on and you're like, man, like that was gold. And the goal is just get it out in front of as many people as you possibly can. And I, I believe that as long as you're doing stuff with the right intentions, no wrong can come from it. Like that's <laughs> just take action and do it for the right reasons. And, you know, you might have some problems and some hiccups, but you're, you're not doing it with malice in your heart. So nothing wrong, nothing bad can come from that. Absolutely. So obviously you've had some great success in multiple businesses. What's your biggest challenge, Ron? Uh, currently right now. Yeah. So it, it would just be name recognition, go to market, like getting out there and penetrating uh, the construction software space, which is dominated by big tech and Silicon Valley. I'm not that, you know, I'm not backed by $10 million. I'm not from Silicon Valley. I'm Ron Newsbaum. I bootstrapped this to get it to where it's at. And, you know, getting go to market and getting out in front of, of our users and starting to get some name recognition, that's an uphill batter. Is anybody out there that's ever started a startup can imagine like it, it's it's a hard it's a hard way to go at it. But, you know, I chose that hard. I understood that. And every day we get better. Like it. Yeah, it's uh, I mean, I think every business suffers from how do I get myself out there? Right. None of us are our Coca-Cola or Home Depot and, and and don't have our name on every street corner. We also don't have a giant warehouse, you know, four miles from every house in the U.S., right? So <laughs> well, and neither did they. 
at one exactly. point in time. You know, Coca-Cola didn't. No one, you know, what we have found is that 90% of our users use no other technology. So we're really positioning ourselves as being a way to help the construction industry transition into using software and technology. And uh, that makes it, you know, a little bit more of an uphill battle because now you're bringing on people that aren't necessarily have been open to technology and software, but we built a solution that's super easy to use. So it's once we get them in front of it and they, we start to show, like if you can use Facebook, you can utilize NutNest, like it's nothing. I mean, I'm a non-technical guy. So you can imagine what our software is like. It's easy, it's user-friendly. Uh, this one's not built, like I said, out in Silicon Valley by people that have never worn the boots. Like this was designed to be able to be used out in the field. And a lot of times what I hear is I thought I was going to have questions, but it's literally just does what you say it's going to do. And that's the goal is to just be great. We want to be great at what we say. Like, I, I don't have any desire to be like a project management tool or this and do scheduling and invoice. Like, I just want to be good at the communication aspect because that's what everything else sucks at. Like, right. it's always the afterthought. Of every software, it's always the afterthought, but it's the number one customer complaint. Hmm. So it's like, why why don't we just focus on like being really, really good at that for our customers? And then their customers will be really, really happy with them. And that will continue to create refers. It will create continued work. And that's that's how we're going out there and doing it and just working on building an empire. Nice. So let's talk about referrals and, and the power of, of people sharing what you're doing and, and knowing and knowing what you're doing and creating those partnerships that, that can be win, 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 right? Win for the customer, win for the other business and win for you. Yeah. So partnerships is one of my biggest go to market strategies, uh, leveraging my existing network as well as people I meet that we have alignment, we have the same beliefs and it just makes sense to work to other because we create that win, win, win outcome. And that to me is one of the most powerful things you can do uh, is go do that and find people that want to do that with you instead of working against. I, I think, especially in the construction realm, and I think in a lot of different industries, you get, we, it's just too combative. There's not enough collaboration and it's all more of like, how do we just figure out to do this on our own and get what get this somewhere? And no one's thinking about that in customer, like that win for them. So when I talk about making a win for that contractor or builder, Everybody out there, think, like, think about it from you, for your customer. If you're not in the construction industry, like, what is a win for them that you're producing, where you can come together with somebody and produce for your customer, and not look at it as, oh, this is my competition, this is this, and this is that. You know, if I can get one, one or two percent of the residential construction space, like, my grandchildren would be taken care of for the rest of their life. So it doesn't take a lot to get in there and make a huge impact on not just the industry, but your family as well. But I think we get too caught up in that, oh, we I need to have the entire pie. I need to go in here and be everything to this customer when what we need to be is we just need to be really, really good at what we do because that's what we owe to our customers. So what I owe to contractors and builders is just to be really, really good at getting their communication organized, making sure that they're able to communicate with their homeowners and help educate them on what does that look like. And that is what we should all be thinking about when we look at our customers and partnerships and what does that look like? Because you can easily go find somebody that does something better than what you do it because it's not something that you're specialized in. It's not like your bread and butter and it's okay to collaborate with them and do something with them because it's going to be a better win for your customers. Absolutely. 
Well, and, and I think, I don't know, in this, obviously, especially obviously contractors, right, compete for jobs, right? We bid the job, we compete for the job, and that that competitive mindset doesn't really leave you a lot of openness for collaborations, <laughs> unless you're collaborating with subs, right? I mean, obviously, they, they have a, an openness to, to collaborate with a sub, right? I need an electrician, I need a plumber, I need these other licensed guys to do these pieces, but another another general is is a different story, right? So you know that's how the industry's been for a lot of years, and I'm starting to see some shift in that with some nice. of these younger guys, where they understand like they want to be really good at what they do, and if they're not good at it, they want to be able to refer it to somebody else. Because they understand like that's where you get in trouble. Even <laughs> if you're stopping it out and you're running the projects, like if it's something you're not really, really good at, you can easily get in trouble. <laughs> so, and I, I've seen guys start to work to other where they're bring in another GC that is really good at that aspect of the job and say, hey, this is who you need to work with for that. And, you know, down the road, that gains them more business because that by being by understanding what you're good at and leaning into it, it just creates a, a, an amount of credibility that you can't buy. Nice. Nice. All right. So I typically end every episode with my guests sharing their words of wisdom. Ron, for the entrepreneurs yeah. listening, what would Ron's words of wisdom be? So my, my words, words, if I can even get it out here, uh, a wisdom is to lean into yourself, spend some time understanding who you are, lean into it, and then get around the people that pull that out of you and make you be that. Because it's really easy to not be that because a lot of times it's hard to really lean into yourself and understand that. And uh I, I'm a firm believer in there's no better you than you. So like, I'm just out to be the best Ron I can possibly be. I understand who Ron is and I need to lean into that and I need to fill the voids with people around me to make up for the areas where I lack. It's a good thing I have a bunch of friends around me, man. <laughs> Ron, thank you so much for jumping on the show today. I appreciate you. I know we're going to jump on another show uh, next week and uh, just look forward to and the great conversations and collaborations uh, that you and I are creating. So thank you. Absolutely, man. I loved it. I loved the conversation. And yeah, great things are going to come from what we're doing. Thank you for tuning in to this episode brought to you by the power of intentional decisions that lead to massive action. Those aren't just buzzwords. They're qualities that can help you take control of your life and build a successful business. To support you on this journey, we're offering you our most popular survey to help you establish a baseline. Visit enjoybizlife.com to check it out and take the first steps towards changing your life and business. We often make things more complicated than they need to be losing sight of what's truly important. This tool will help you refocus on what matters most so that you can start doing the things you've always wanted to do, like spending quality time with loved ones. And if you enjoyed this episode, please show us some love by liking, subscribing, or leaving a review. But most importantly, share it with someone who needs to hear it. In our next episode, Lisa Mello and I discuss her journey from litigation attorney to stay-at-home mom to cancer survivor who chose to re-enter the world as a fashion entrepreneur. Her goal is to bring fashion into the workplace as a benefit that helps employees elevate their work. Uh -huh.